Welcome back to the Money Mailbag. If you're new to this feature, the Money Mailbag is an audio feature here on the blog where you send in your questions and I answer them. You can send in your questions for the next edition of the Money Mailbag to my email address. It is drmoney83, that is D-O-C-T-O-R-M-O-N-E-Y-8-3 at AOL.com. You can leave them in my inbox on my forum spring page or leave them on the wall of my Facebook page. All the links to all my social networking sites are in the About tab on the blog. Uh, we have a few questions today, but we're going to get into those in just a minute. Uh, before that, I'd like to go over some things that happened on Raw last night. Uh, I'd like to thank Patrick Harrington for uh, stepping in last night and filling in for me. Um, in case you didn't know, it was my birthday last night. Um, didn't really do much, uh, but I just didn't feel like writing on my birthday. So I asked Patrick to step in, and he did a great job as always. Uh, he's one of the biggest contributors to the blog, and I really appreciate having him around. So big ups to Patrick. Um, normally, if I don't cover Raw in the review, um, I usually write what's called quick thoughts. I was going to do that, but... I did watch Raw last night and I didn't think that it warranted anything written. Uh, so I'm just going to go over a couple of the main happenings from Raw last night. Obviously, the biggest one is that John Cena has to join Nexus. And I like where it's going because it can lead to what we all want it to lead to. And that's the John Cena heel turn. I think it's interesting that they're going with the at the beginning of the show that they had an injured Tarver. And then the GM, or the yeah, the GM said that he couldn't do that. He had to follow Barrett's orders or be disqualified. Now I like that because Tarver sucks, and they can get him out of there, and then have streamline it to have the better guys like Gabriel. And even though I don't really think Otunga is good in the ring as a wrestler, he's good as a, a mouthpiece and an enforcer type. So I like him there. Obviously, you got Barrett, and then if you're going to add in McGillicuddy and Husky Harris, you don't need Michael Tarver. Now, I would have liked to have him eliminate Heath Slater as well before the decree came down, but if you can get uh, Tarver out of there, that's a good thing. Now, Cena playing the downtrodden, going against his will, babyface, is good for right now. You can't, I don't, well, you can, but I don't want the angle to go in the direction where he stays this way and he he wins a match against Barrett, giving him his freedom. Something has to happen where he turns on somebody and goes full-fledged heel as the leader of the Nexus. That's where that has to go. Um, the other thing from Raw is that you saw Edge get drafted, I shouldn't say drafted, he got traded to SmackDown with, uh, finally his war with the GM led him to get uh, traded to SmackDown. I'm fine with that move, especially since he seems to be going in a babyface capacity. I guess you could say Raw's dominated on the heel side with the Nexus angle, and then you got Sheamus up there, so maybe they don't need another top heel at the moment, so that's fine. Uh, they did say it was a trade, so somebody's going to come to Raw. Uh, I heard a rumor here that it was CM Punk. I guess that's okay, although Punk would not probably not be a main eventer on Raw either. He'd probably be in the mid-card, so I don't know if that's much better for him. And the third main thing that happened from Raw last night is that Wade Barrett is the new number one contender for the WWE Championship. He will face John Cena at bragging rights. And a pay-per-view that no one's going to see because uh, Brock Lesnar's defending the UFC Heavyweight Championship against Cain Velasquez the night earlier. And to be dead honest with you, if I can only order one pay-per-view, I'm going to watch the Lesnar fight. That's just me, though. Um, so, it would be interesting to see if they do put the belt on Barrett. They could do that because Cena has to follow his orders. So, Barrett could say that, hey, you got to help me win the title. This could be the big heel. This could be the beginning of the heel turn where Cena helps him win the title reluctantly, but he does it anyway. 
So it'll be interesting to see where that goes from there. Uh, other than that, uh, I didn't really find Raw that entertaining. Uh, the stupid hand shit with Johnny Knoxville, and it was just brutal. I don't even understand the point of these guest hosts or stars or whatever the frig they're calling them anymore. I really don't understand the point of it. You want to plug, you want to plug their movie, Dorn Raw, show a clip. That's fine. Just get these guys off of my TV. I'd say 95% of these guest hosts have been terrible and they've brought nothing to the show. WWE realizes the gimmick sucks. I don't know why they still continue with it, even though they know it's terrible. Uh, other than that, that pretty much covers Raw. Like you said, uh, Patrick did a great job with the Raw review, so check that out. Um, so let's get on to the questions. And this one comes from Form Spring. Uh, Let's see here. We got one in the form spring. And it says, uh, this is non wrestling related, but I'll answer it anyway. It says, your thoughts on Wes Welker. State your likes and dislikes. And try to avoid being biased on that he being that he is a Pats player. Uh, yes, being a Yankees fan, I have been uh, born and bred to hate everyone and everything from Boston. And since the New England Patriots are based out of Boston, New England area. Um, I hate them, but I do like Wes Walker as a player. Um, I think he creates a hell of a lot of matchup problems because he's a, a slot receiver and he's very fast. And uh, most of the time it's going to create matchup problems where he's gonna, a linebacker is going to have to cover him and they, won't, they aren't able to stick with him. Um, I guess you could say if I have a dislike about him is that he's kind of small ish, uh, but I don't think that's really come into a uh, factor, because usually smaller players are more prone to injury, because they can't, their bodies aren't uh, able to take the hits, but he had one injury last year with the knee injury, and it was kind of a freak thing, so I guess it's not really anything to worry about. Uh, Welker's the best slot receiver in the league. Uh, I was rooting for him last night, though, because I needed the Patriots win to lock up my uh, football pool for the week, and uh, so they won, so I won a cool 200 bucks, so that was a nice little uh, icing on top of my birthday cake there, so I'm happy about that. But I like Wes Walker as a player. I think uh, I'd love him if he was a New York Giant. You know, line him up in the slot. Although we do have Steve Smith, who is uh, also a hell of a receiver and basically the same type of role. So, you know, I like Walker. You know, he's a good player. I hope that wasn't biased, although I do hate Boston. And if I'm anybody out there from that area is listening to this and I have offended you, well, I'm a Yankee fan. I'm sure you hate New Yorkers too. Although I'm from New Jersey, there is a difference. All right, let's get to the questions. Uh, no email questions this week. We got a couple from Facebook. And that's going to wrap it up. Not too many questions. You know, just send them in. And when I get about four, five, six of them, we're going to answer them. All right, in my opinion, who is the most underutilized WWE superstar? And that answer would be Evan Bourne. Uh, as you could see, Evan Bourne never gets on TV. And when he does, he's paired with Mark Henry. Uh, the guy is an excellent wrestler. The fans are into him. Socially, he's good to market to the young kids because he can fly around the ring and they're interested in that type of stuff. The guy needs a push. I'm not saying heavyweight championship material. But give him a push up the card. He should be feuding with Daniel Bryan right now over the United States Championship. That could be a hell of a feud. Now, you're saying the most underutilized. I think other guys are not being used as properly as they should. I think John Morrison's right at the top of that list. The guy should be a main event superstar by now, in my opinion. That's me. But um, if the I have to pick one. I'd say it is definitely Evan Bourne. I think Christian's not utilized to his potential, um, but he's going to be out for a while now with his, uh, I believe it's a torn pectoral muscle. So, you know, it is what it is with that. But it's Evan Bourne. Uh, the guy needs to be pushed. And remember, in the couple, only a couple months ago, he was in a main event angle with uh, there a couple weeks with John Cena against, I think it was Edge and Sheamus, and then oh, now he's with Mark Henry. I mean, you can't fall from the card much more than that. You go from teaming with Cena to teaming with Mark Henry. It's not really exactly that good of a thing. All right. My uh, short 
the next question is my short-term and long-term fixes for TNA. I think um, long-term is they got to get all the old guys out of the company. The Stings, the Nashes, the Jeff Jarrett's. Get them out. They're not, they're not going to be around for the long haul. You got to push the younger guys. You got AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, um, guys like that. Uh, you got the Motor City Machine Guns. Um, I'm trying to think of guys off the top of my head. Uh, the Pope. You know, guys like that. These are young, fresh, exciting guys that are superstars in TNA. Use them. In my short term, you got to. It's better. It just comes down to better booking. I mean. So I'm saying there. I'm watching Impact, and some of the stuff that they do doesn't make sense. The the whole Fey angle with Abyss, the whole conspiracy thing with uh, Sting and uh, Kevin Nash. It's too confusing. People don't can't decipher. There's two big major uh, mysteries hanging over TNA right now. One is enough. So it comes down to better booking and focusing on younger talent. That's basically what it comes down to in TNA. Maybe they'll never reach the heights of WWE or even WCW, but they can be more entertaining and hold a share of the market with better booking and focusing on younger talent. All right, next question comes in. is uh, Besides Monday, what's the best night to air wrestling? Um, I think Wednesday would be a good night to air wrestling because there's not really much on television on Wednesday. Uh, Tuesday, because you get the break from uh, Raw in there, and then Friday is an absolutely atrocious day for wrestling. But if they moved, it's either Wednesday or Thursday. I would move SmackDown back to Thursday, but Thursday's a big TV day. There's a lot of good television shows on Thursday. So, for viewership-wise, I'd say Wednesday. When, you know, Monday, Wednesday, pay-per-view on Sunday, or Thursday. It's either Wednesday or Thursday. Take your pick. Uh, my best guess, the next question is my best guess as to why Vince McMahon shuns Randy Savage. Uh, the popular rumor going around for a while now is that he banged Stephanie McMahon when she was a teenager. Um, if some guy had banged my teenage daughter in his 40s, I wouldn't want him around either. Uh, I would think it's something personal like that because Vince has brought everybody else back into the fold, even guys that have tried to screw him over in the court of law and try to end his business, so I would have to go with something like that. My ideal number of pay-per-views is the next uh, question, and um, I'd say 12, go one a month, why not? Uh, it's ridiculous that uh, Hell in a Cell was two weeks after Night of Champions, and now we got another one in Bragging Rights coming up in just three weeks. I dump Bragging Rights, there's no use for it, nobody cares battle between Raw and SmackDown. If you want to do that, and you have a SmackDown versus Raw elimination match at the Survivor Series. Uh, bragging rights is useless. You have a Hell in a Cell at the end of October. Space them out. Go one a month. It's the way to go. And the last question is, who shot the Sheriff? Um, I shot the Sheriff, but the law won. That's going to wrap up the Money Mailbag for this week. Um, like I said, when I get about five, six, seven questions, I'll post another one of these. Um, so send in your questions to the email address, drmoney83 at AOL.com. Put money mailbag in the subject heading because I do get a bunch of spam because for some people, uh, some reason people actually think I'm a doctor, so I get a lot of bullshit sent there. So just so I don't ignore your emails or leave them on my Facebook page or pop them into Formspring. Um, if I rush through these, it's only because I can only have a 15 minute limit on my uh, sound recorder as of right now, so I don't want to go over that and I don't want to have to record two of these in one day, but um, I think maybe for future I will give better answers and do two of them if I go over 15 minutes. But I think 15 minutes is basically about the time that you're getting sick and tired of hearing me. So I just wrap them up. I hope I answered your questions as the best I can. And if I didn't, send them along. Um, send along them again, and I'll try to answer them better. Uh, but for now, this is Dr. Money, and my office is closed.